packed Edinburgh High Court listened intently today as the judge told David Gilroy he must spend at least 18 years in jail for the murder of his former lover Suzanne Pilly. The body of the Edinburgh bookkeeper has never been found. For the first time in a UK criminal court, the public saw the judgment too, with a camera allowed to film the sentencing, something we could be seeing a good deal more of in the future. From Edinburgh, here's our chief correspondent, Alex Thompson. Not the first time cameras have been allowed in a Scottish court, but certainly the first time for contemporaneous news broadcast of a mandatory life sentence for murder. In this case, handed down to 49-year-old David Gilroy. I sentence you, as I am required by law to do, to life imprisonment. I am also required to order that you serve a number of years as a punishment part of the sentence. It's believed he buried the body of his victim, Suzanne Pilly, in the Highlands. She's never been found. You immediately embarked on an elaborate plan to dispose of her body and avoid detection. With quite chilling calmness and calculation, you set about the task. We're still a long way from televising trials here in Scotland and even further in England and Wales, and there are many people who will say that is no bad thing. So what today was about was simply showing the point at which justice is done and seen to be done and delivered. Simply the sentencing from the judge and pretty much the judge alone. Edinburgh's legal establishment have formalised the use of cameras in court cases since 1992. But as one lawyer here put it, there's a danger all this could end up a bit Jeremy Kyle. And there are obviously clear limitations. I'm very concerned about the idea that you identify jurors at any stage. Jury members give their time and their effort and their diligence to this process and we don't want to make them into public figures. They do a good job and we should allow them to stay out of the limelight while they're doing their job very well. Though many media lawyers, including that of Channel 4 News, would welcome wider access of cameras to the courts. It's important that the public see justice being done, to see how the criminal justice process works and to have greater engagement and knowledge of how the legal system works. And today is an important day and a big step forward uh, along that line. Cameras were banned in 1925 in England and Wales. This picture of Frederick Seddon, a poisoner, being sentenced to death in 1912, a glimpse of how things once were. Spool forward and the appeal hearing of the Lockerbie bomber Abdel Basit Al Megrahi in 2002 in Holland allowed cameras in to see five Scottish judges deliberate and the debates gathered pace ever since. So much so that the next Queen's speech is widely expected to call for greater filming of our courts. Alex Thompson, Channel 4 News, Edinburgh.